Hey everyone, what's up? Today I'm gonna teach you a technique that helps you go from zero DR tracking in inspection to full DR tracking. And it's called DR visibility principle. So basically the idea is when you plan your first block, you partially track DR. So you know that uh, it'll be in a visible spot towards the end of first block. Now this is a vague tracking process. You don't have to exactly know where DR will be, just enough to know it's going to be in one of these visible locations. And by that, I mean it's at the intersection of these visible faces, namely R, U, L, and F. So like in this area of corners and edges, I call the visible spots. And they're good. They're, they're very awesome if we can know that uh, DR will end up at one of these spots towards the end of the first block. And I call this visibility guarantee. Why is that good? Well, if we have visibility guarantee, we can just fixate our eyes on all the visible spots around this area and anticipate that DR will show up at some time towards the end of the first block at one of these locations and uh, begin tracking DR from there. Right? This is like a surefire way of knowing uh, that our tracking effort will be successful. Now compare this to aimlessly scanning around the cube if we don't know where DR will be at all with zero information, then then we don't have any guarantee whether the scanning process will succeed uh, in the process of solving the first block. And if, if not, we'll just have to pause and look for DR. Now with the visibility guarantee, now first of all, this uh, random process of scanning is made deterministic, so you won't ever stop to look for pieces like DR anymore. And second is that this, the kind of the scanning range is also smaller. Now it's only scanning for kind of the visible spots and it's super easy to just to slightly flip your wrists to do that. And uh, so that you can also turn faster and react faster because the range is smaller. Now these uh, add up to a great advantage over, you know, regular tracking with zero information about DR and it'll translate to a really little or no pause during the second block transition. Alright, so that's the motivation. Uh, a little more detail on what I call visibility. So visible spots, uh, like I said, are these uh, pieces, like the R U U F uh, R F L U L F edges, and R U F L U F corners, and maybe also the U layer corners. Well, the definition is a little, you know, vague and really up to you, but the idea is the visible areas are the intersection of these faces. And the reason they're better than non-visible ones is because, well, if you didn't predict certain pieces in inspection, uh, you really can just watch them move and, and know where they are instantly without tracking at all. So visibility analysis is this approximate tracking process by which you tell whether a piece is going to go to a visible spot or not at the end of like your, your inspected stage. So usually uh, that means you know whether DR will end up visible or not at the end of your first block. And it serves as a powerful substitute for fold tracking. Again, if you can't track them, it's almost as good to just to bring them up to the visible area and watch them move. Yeah, it's surprisingly good. So next I'll use some examples to illustrate how to apply the visibility principle in planning, especially to the DR piece. Okay, first example. I'm gonna solve on green bottom. Um, that's just my base color being blue green, so bear with me. Uh, so the block will be blue green, uh, sorry, <laughs> green white. And uh, the first pair is here, the second pair is here. So the uh, apparent solution would be to make a square with this remover. But um, it's bad because it'll bring DR to like, this back bottom spot, which is bad because it loses visibility. So alternatively, we can uh, pair this up with uh, UR prime U prime, and then insert with F2. And w what that means for DR is it'll be taken here to FR, and N. we all know that FR is a visible spot, so the visibility is preserved. Like that, right? And and the finish would be something like that, R B prime, and that'll make an easy FBDR solution. And the beauty of it is, uh, once we know that after the first square is solved, DR will end up here, we can really rest assured that 
uh, the remainder of first block would not be able to affect DR that much at all. It's just how it usually works when DR is really visible uh, here and then the last pair is not too bad. We can usually always easily find a way to solve the last pair so that it doesn't break the visibility of DR. Right, so you don't really have to track DR fully, just partially, maybe after first square to know it'll be visible and it'll be all good after that because uh, the visibility makes tracking DR super easy. Even if you don't track them, I mean, it makes staring at DR and see how it moves super easy. Second example, solving on blue-white. So the DL edge is here. We want to make a square by R and U2 and then insert the corner D2 to form a square at the back. But notice that instead of forming the square, uh, I mean inserting the corner with FD2, which will you know break the visibility of DR, we can instead do RUR prime D2 to bring DR here. And uh, since I also saw that you know, the last pair would be in a visible spot as well. And as a general principle, uh, visible last pairs usually also preserves visible DR. Okay, so since all three of these pieces are pretty visible, I mean, you call these super visible, this is like okay, but since you know what it is, that's, that's pretty good already. So since all three pieces are good, uh, the finish will also be good, meaning that it'll preserve DR's visibility and yeah, it'll be a very easy finish uh, into second block. Cool. Okay, one more example. So DL is solved. We're solving on blue-red. This is a ready-meat pair, and uh, the other pair is here. So if we solve the back pair first, it would be undesirable because it breaks the visibility of DR again. So if you solve the back pair, it'll be R, B2, and then something like R prime B2 again. So DR will end up in BR, and yeah, so it's kind of hard to track for us. But alternatively, well, if we choose to solve the front pair first by, you know, inserting this pair with something like, uh, okay, one-handed is terrible for demonstrating, with a B, uh, R2, looking at DR here, F2, so DR you know, will be up here in, in uh, UR, and we know the other pair will be here, so without even tracking DR, we know, we trust that the visibility of DR will pretty much be preserved through the last pair solution, R, E prime, yeah, so it'll be here, and that's, uh, that ensures a pretty good continuation, and yeah. yeah, so as a last word, it is worth noting that this is this serves as a general principle. You can also apply the visibility analysis to you know the last pair pieces because if your last pair pieces are visible, they tend to be easy and you have an easier time tracking DR as well. Yeah, really, I see this uh, visibility principle as a missing link between you know no DR tracking and full DR tracking. And, you know, instead of you know walking a hardcore path of, hey, I'm just going to learn to track pieces no matter where they end up at, you kind of develop a preference for what kind of patterns of pieces are good, namely the visible ones and which ones are bad. And eventually, after you learn so much about you know partial tracking and you know visibility kind of I in inducing techniques, uh, you end up learning so much about tracking in general as well, so that you become stronger at tracking arbitrary pieces. Whereas if you walk the path of, you know, hardcore path of learning to track any piece uh, in the first place, you gradually find out that, hey, you want easy patterns as well. And these easy patterns are gonna be exactly those, you know, that are described by the visibility principle. So these two paths, I think, more or less converges. The visibility path, to me, is the easier path, but some people are naturally good at you know, just tracking pieces. So, yeah, it really depends on, I guess, which type of person you are, but I think it's always good to know that this, these there are two kind of parallel learning passes to full FB plus DR tracking, and uh, if you're stuck on one path, it's worth 
you know, just looking at the other path and switching between them. Maybe that'll help you learn. Yeah, so this is a pretty new technique for me as well. I, I'm like, I had thoughts, but today I took the time to like theorize it. So please let me know your thoughts. Please, please do. Um, let me know if this is helping you, where it is confusing you, and I'll be happy to talk more about it. Yeah, and at last, I guess, have fun. Uh, FBDR, FBDR, it really is the treasure trove. Uh, it's just so fun, and it, it'll bring your time down incredibly. You won't believe it. It's, it's what helped me like just achieve sub-7 straight out with no other additions. It's, it's amazing, and I hope you will find out your own way of mastering it. Yeah, peace out.